Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and I'm back here in the garage today with my 2003 Ford Focus SVT and I'm going to be doing the clutch master cylinder. I'll take a closer look and I'll show you what's going on. I'm going to be replacing this here. That is your clutch master cylinder. And take a closer look inside here. So you can kind of see what's going on. I know it's kind of hard to see, but my floor mat's kind of wet here. And it has brake fluid on it. So I took a closer look underneath here. And you can see the clutch master cylinder there. And I got kind of some fresh uh, brake fluid there. So the uh, seal must be leaking on it. So I'm going to do that today. And just like my other videos, try to make this... Uh, quick and straight to the point so uh, let's get started all right so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start under the hood here getting some of this stuff out of the way the air filter housing uh, the battery and then this fuse panel uh, so we can get back in there to uh, disconnect those lines from the master cylinder so first off go into your battery uh, got a little cover here you can just pop that off and then go ahead and pull that cover off. And then go ahead and disconnect your terminals. You got 10 millimeter on your negative post. Same with on your positive. And then down here, holding the strap 10 millimeter as well. Pull those off. Go ahead and lift your battery out. And then let's go ahead and do this air filter housing. Uh, you can go ahead and disconnect your mass airflow sensor here. Just push in on this clip. And pull out. And then go ahead and do your four bolts on your air filter housing. These are going to be eight millimeter. Then go ahead and pull your cover off, remove your air filter, pour your, pull your four screws so you don't lose them. Okay, then let's go ahead and take this uh, intake hose off, right by your mass airflow sensor there. And on these clips you just take a flat head. Stick a flathead under there and turn. Same with on the other side. And then it pops up just like that. Go ahead and pull that off. And then I'm going to squeeze this clamp together just so I don't lose it. Then if you got a rag, just go ahead and shove a rag or a paper towel in there just so nothing gets... Uh, falling down in there into the throttle body there and then let's remove the uh, bottom half of the air filter housing and this should just pull up Yeah, that just pulls up. You can see you got a tab here, tab here, and then a tab here. And there's also on this back side, uh, there's a little plug here or hose. This hose here was connected into there. Uh, actually, it wasn't on mine. It must have fell out. And then that goes up to your valve cover here. So just pull this out, this hose out before you uh, pull out your filter housing there. All right, so now let's try and uh, get this fuse panel or fuse box out of the way here. And if you look down in there, you see that little bolt there? It's going to be a 7 millimeter there. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Uh, 
That's what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to re try and release these tabs. I'll just grab a screwdriver and uh, just bend this tab. Same with the other one and then uh, lift up on it. But as you guys are doing this, be careful. Um, there's a lot of wires going into this uh, fuse box here. So hopefully this is going to work. And hopefully I can just move this out of the way to get back in there. But um show you guys too, just like you can see on mine, it's just this stuff's just falling apart. It's so brittle and damaged by heat. So like I said, just be careful with all your wires as you're doing this. Okay, so it looks like I can't just lift this out of here. Um, I got all this wiring harness going underneath the strut mount and all that here. And got a bunch of bunch of these wiring harnesses just uh, stuck on here. So let me see what I need to do next to get this out of here. Alright, so there's no way I can take this and move it over. Uh, as of right now so I'm going to try and disconnect some of these wiring harness clips um, along the way here to see if maybe we can free up a little slack on these wiring harnesses so I'm just going to like I said pull some of these clips out like that one and there's one down in here. If I can get to it. That one. Let's try this one here. Um, looks like Another one down here underneath the washer fluid fill. And like I said earlier, this stuff just breaking, so heat damaged. So that kind of freed up a little bit, not much. And I'm going to try. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but there's a little little tab back in here. Um, this wiring harness here. So I'm going to try and pull that off of here as well. That one's out. Let's see if that gave us any more room. So it looks like that gave us maybe a little more room. Uh, there we go. That actually might might just be enough. Just like that. Might just be enough to get us in there. Because then as you can see... down there at the green and 
this line here is going into the top part of the uh, clutch master cylinder and the bottom green one there down there that's a, a hard line going into there so see what we can do and then next i'm gonna drain out as much of this brake fluid as i can out of the master cylinder here and uh, on these cars the clutch uses the same uh, master cylinder as the brake so they're all conjoined together I'm going to pull this tab off first. And then I got this little pump. Uh, just a little hand pump that I'm going to pump out that old fluid with. And you can use a turkey baster or a, even like a, a soap dispenser type uh, pump. Then go ahead and stick your cap back on so nothing, no dirt or anything gets back down into your master cylinder there. And with that pretty much empty, hopefully uh, there's not too much brake fluid that comes out uh, when we disconnect these lines. Alright, so I just want to show you guys real fast. So here's the new one. And this will be your bottom line, your top. And as you can see, you got these little uh, like spring clips that uh, hold the lines in there. So what we're going to do is take our little pick and you want to get up underneath the little spring clip here. So once you get up underneath there, you want to turn your pick towards uh, the line. And get down there a little bit more and then just kind of pull it out a little bit and then that's what releases the line but be careful because these can um, fly out if you if you do it too hard but yeah as you can see you just and then this just pushes in like that and that's what holds that line in there all right, so looking at the bottom line there, you can see I got my paper towel shoved in there. Soak up any brake fluid. And let's see if I can get in there uh, so you guys can see. And you want to get in that little groove on the side there and then turn if possible. Okay, so I got a part way out. Let me see if I can grab a screwdriver and make it a little easier. There we go. So just like that. And now this line is a hard line and I I believe um there's a bracket down here holding it on. So I'm hoping with it just keeping it like that, I'll be able to pull the whole master cylinder um, out inside the bottom of the dash there and uh, not have to undo that little bracket. Okay, so moving on. This is the top line. We'll do the same thing to it.
Okay, this one we should be able to pull out since it's not uh, strapped down with a bracket like the bottom one. Let's see if we can pull this out of here. Okay, so that pulls out and kind of made a mess. Let's see if you can take your line and bend it up here. All right, so I just took my line there and just wrapped it in a paper towel just to keep it from uh, leaking. But as you can see, this is the one that goes directly to the master cylinder there. And that should be about it. Uh, I took a paper towel and cleaned up some of that uh, leftover brake fluid. But I think that's about it for on top here. So we'll go ahead and go uh, inside the car under the dash there. Alright, so inside the car here, right below the steering wheel, we're going to take off this panel and give us a little more uh, better access to down below here. And you got four bolts. Uh, they're going to be eight millimeters. You got one here. One there, one down below here, and then down here by your diagnostic port. So go ahead and undo those. And then your hood latch here, um, it's going to be a 19 millimeter, and actually mine's already loose, so you may not even need a wrench. Just unscrew this nut here, and then that releases your hood latch. Okay, and then on your diagnostic port here, you can reach down from underneath there and push and then you got like kind of a little tab it just sitting in here um so just pull it this way and then with your fingers down here press and it just slides right out of there and then you can get this panel out of here okay so with that panel off that gives you a lot better access down here so you can go ahead and get their diagnostic port up out of the way same with your uh hood popper and then uh, you got this plug in right here there's a little silver uh, spring clip on it and you'll just push in on that with your thumb and then just pull out just like that and that's what that looks like so you just push it and you can see it releases it so get that up out of the way as well Okay, so let's go ahead and undo all these plugs on the brake pedal here, this red, green, and black one. On this red one, just take a screwdriver and pry up on that silver spring clip there. And then that should, yep, just pulls off of there like that. Flip that back on so you don't lose that. And coming over the green one. And it's just like that uh, other one. You just push down and then pull out on it. And looks like this black one is going to be the same thing. So push in and then pull off. And that releases those three plugs on there so we can get them up and out of the way here with the rest of our wiring harnesses. Okay, so there's a couple bolts on the back side here that we got to take out to get this master cylinder off. So to give us a little more room, I'm going to undo these. Try and take these plugs off of here. Um, I believe you just turn them and then they come off. Oh, I 
break it. No. Okay. So yeah, that one you just turn, or I turn to the left. Uh, and the black one here. Okay. This one, turn to the right. And this green one. Okay. And then there's the green one. And that turned to the left to get those off. So that'll give us a little more easier access to, like I said, there's a bolt right there we need to get to. And then one back in through here uh, from the underside. And we may have to actually undo, looks like we got one, two, and down below four bolts um, for this pedal housing here that we got to take off. Okay, and then on this black one here, um, got these two tabs here that latch onto this metal piece. But back on this third one, this very back one, you can reach your finger up in here. And then see, I can lift up, and then as you lift up on that, pull towards you, and that releases this one. Show you a closer look at that one here. You can see that little tab, so you just got to lift this tab, and then uh, that slides that way and off. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and undo the, that 10 millimeter bolt there. And then down below, you got the same thing, another 10 millimeter. And I'm gonna use a, just a little stubby wrench here, a ratcheting wrench. Okay, with those off, now we should be able to just pull this off of here. That releases that. So next I'm gonna pull this little tab, uh, just move it over so we can release it from that bolt there. So I think we just push on it. Yeah, and just slide that over like that. So now it should be able to release from there. And I think the problem I'm having is right here, uh, this little bracket that connects onto the pedal assembly is getting in the way of me pulling this out of here. So I believe I'm gonna have to take off these bolt nuts here, uh, these gold ones, or maybe just loosen them up a little bit and that'll give me enough wiggle room to, uh, to move this over just a little bit to slide that out. So let's go ahead and undo those four. Those are going to be a 14 millimeter. And like I said, I'm just going to loosen them a little bit. Not completely pull them out. And as you can see, that loosened that up a lot more. To give us a lot more wiggle room now. Let me just do these a little more. Okay, so back up top here, I'm going to remove those uh, spring clips uh, just so they don't get lost. And so it's easier to shove that through uh, the firewall when we're under the dasher. So go ahead and pull these clips. And you can see that's what those look like. Grab this bottom one. That one actually go a little more to pop it off. Hopefully I don't lose it.
And there's that one. All right, so we should be able to go ahead and pull on this clutch master cylinder with all that detached up there. And then with this pedal assembly loose, we should just be able to hopefully pull this out. Just like that, grab your rag, because you got brake fluid coming in right here. You don't want to get that everywhere. All right, so you can just compare your new parts as usual. And we can go ahead and pull this uh, little foam off, transfer that over to the new one. Just try to clean that as best as you can. Transfer that over. So looking at my old one, you can see uh, right in here, it's almost had a bad seal in here. And uh, you can see where that brake fluid just started eating away at the plastic here. And same with down here. So you can see where it was just running down and then dripping onto my floor mat there. And then uh, I'll show you the part number here. I got this from Advanced Auto Parts. Um, it's going to be the Luck LMC370, uh, which is the original uh, OEM part uh, that Ford uses. So another thing I want to show you guys before you put in your clutch master cylinder it's a good idea to replace your uh, clutch spring um, I know these tend to break um, after a while now my focus has right at 244,000 miles on it and it's still going but take a peek here I'll show you if you can see there you can see that little hairline crack on that spring. So that spring's probably about ready to bust soon. So I'll go ahead and swap that out. So I'm just gonna try to put a pair of needle nose vice grips on that and then pull up on it. See if that works to get that spring out of there. that and then you can just pull it out of there okay so looking at that spring guess I was wrong it wasn't a hairline crack there's just this like protective coating that as you can see is coming off but what the heck, we might as well replace it while we're in there. So here's our new one. And this is going to be the part number for that spring. So just like removal. I'm going to put the bottom end in first. Stick that through. And then hook on my vice grips. Just like that. All 
And here's just a closer look at that bottom part of the spring there. So you guys can get a better idea. And here's the top. All right, so with our new pedal spring installed, I think we're ready to move on to installing the new master cylinder. And I took my rag out of there, and as you can see, there's the hard uh, line. It moves just a little bit, but not much, because it is bolted uh, to the body there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the new master cylinder and... Uh, so it's going to go in like that. So what I'm going to do is take off this cap on the bottom, bottom line, and pull out this spring. So we can push that straight onto that hard line there. So I'll go ahead and remove this, and I'll put it in up top under the hood there. Because I don't want it getting caught up in there. So then we can remove our cap. And let's go ahead and try and install here. And again, make sure this is open too, so it can slide through on that uh, bolt here. So get it lined up as best as you can. Try to get it through that onto that line there. It's gonna be the hardest part. So maybe like that. Coming at an angle. Get this past that point. And get this part past this. that and then push as hard as you can and I'm pretty sure we're in on that line there all right so before we head up top I'm gonna just make sure that's all the way back and then uh, go ahead and lock this in so in case we do have to push that line in so just move that over and now that locks your master cylinder in place there. And then uh, just gonna go ahead and put this on too. Actually, let me clean that a little bit. Clean that off. And let's stick that on here. And that should be in. So let's go up top and take a look. Okay, so back up top, you can see we're not quite all the way in. So I'm gonna take a pry bar, and just see if I can push on this and push it in there. Just like that, and we're in. Let me grab my uh, spring clip. Okay, and then I'll install my spring clip. Let's see if I can get here where you guys can see or not. Yeah, not really. Okay, so I got that little snap. Uh, clip in there on the bottom line and then up top here I just pulled that one out just a little bit so now we should be able to pull this cap out of here okay I got that and then uh, I got that clip just pulled out just a little bit so we should be able to put our line in there and then uh, push in on that clip and that should work just fine so we'll grab our new line here, or not our new line, our same line. Make sure that's all clean. And let's go ahead and stick this down in here. So 
there's that, and then we'll push this clip in. And then you hear it click. And there we go. So that's all in. And that's the hard part. And I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit and get rid of these uh, rags that are full brake fluid here. Okay, so now we should be able to start tightening everything down. Just want to show you guys something real quick. Um, you can see where the black part comes through. Uh, your clutch master cylinder back there. You want to make sure those are all lined up. And same with right there. You got those little tabs uh, that kind of fit into these little slots. So you want to make sure to get those lined up. And then as you can see down below there, I got that silver 10 millimeter bolt just started. So I'll go ahead and tighten up these gold nuts first. And then I'll do this top one after I get all those tightened. So then go ahead and tighten all those. Your uh, 14 millimeter. Then let's see if I can get my other 10 millimeter up in here started. This is the hardest one to get up into. There's no room to get up in there. Okay, so I finally got that one in. And I just want to show you guys, this one is really hard to get in. Um, had to get it lined up just like that. And then I actually had to took a screwdriver and stuck it in between here to push on the screw to stay in there. And then uh, just started tightening it with my wrench uh, while holding the screwdriver up against that just to get enough room in there to make that start going into the master cylinder there. So now I can finally start tightening the rest of these, or these two down here. Okay, with all that tight, we can go ahead and start putting these uh, these back on. We'll start out with this black one over here. That just snaps on there like that. And we'll do the green one first. See, and that one came off to the left, so we got to go to the right, like that, and I think it was our black one was right here, and this one came off to the right, so we need to go to the left to tighten it, just like that, and then our red one. This one came off to the left, so I think we gotta do this one to the right, maybe. I don't know. Okay. It's so like that. And then go to the right. So I'm pretty sure that's how those were. I'm going to go ahead and start plugging these in. Just bring all these down. Get 
Again, the green one, squeeze on the top, press those in there. Same with your black one. And our red one just snaps in there. And then this black one, push down, push in. Just make sure that's on there. Should be good. Then go ahead and grab your panel. Put your diagnostic port through there. Snaps in there. Then your hood latch, your hood prop. Stick that in. Let's tighten this nut down. 19 millimeter. And you don't have to go too tight on this since it's just plastic. Go ahead and start bringing it up. And we'll screw it in. All right, so back on top here. Now, before I go and uh, start putting the fuse box back in, um, I'm gonna bleed the system because I wanna make sure uh, nothing's leaking before I cover all that up and can't see it. But uh, I'm gonna pull this battery uh, box out first because you can kind of see right down in there is a uh, how you bleed the clutch at the transmission there so if i remove this battery tub this will give us a lot more uh, room to look in there and see what we're doing and to do that it looks like you just got these two bolts uh 14 millimeter here and i'm hoping this will just pull out of here loose out of here and just strap out of the way So yeah, as you can see, that gives us a lot more room to see what we're doing. But there's your uh, your bleeder screw. That's the cap on it right now. So we'll go ahead and start bleeding it. So what I'm gonna do first is pull the cap off the brake master cylinder slash clutch master cylinder. And go ahead and uh, top it off. I'm just using some DOT3 and 4 brake fluid. So you can just top that off to the max. You got your max line here. Then go ahead and remove your rubber grommet cap on your bleeder screw here. Okay, so the way this is designed is pretty stupid. But uh, you can't get an open end wrench on there because it gets in the way right here. So what I had to do was take an 11 millimeter socket and... Uh, 
what you want to do is just get on that bleeder screw and just break it loose with your socket and just barely tighten it so that way you can get a wrench on here and it's not so tight and uh and then we'll be able to unscrew it with our uh, tube hooked up and then we can go ahead and start bleeding it and make sure we're getting the air out all right so easiest way i found of bleeding this is uh instead of connecting a tube to it um i just take my 11 millimeter socket deep well put it on the bleeder screw and with somebody in the side of the car pressing on the pedal uh, bleeding it that way and then you can see it just runs down it's not going to hurt anything runs down the transmission just make sure you got a drip pan underneath here and you can see right there it just runs down straight into that drip pan so i think that's the easiest way of doing it and the way i've been doing it is so you want to tighten that first and make sure your reservoir is full. I'll go ahead and open the bleeder screw and then have this person inside. Okay, go ahead and push lightly on the pedal and you'll see it flow out of there. And then when they're all the way down, I'll go ahead and tighten this up. And tell them, all right, go ahead and left up. Okay. And then I'll open it back up. Okay, go ahead and press down lightly. And then tighten back up. Okay, you can let off. And down lightly. And just watch for air bubbles as you're doing this. Tighten up. Okay, let off. And then go ahead and pump it a few times. And let me check my reservoir. Okay. Let me add some more fluid real quick. Okay, and now they pumped it, I'll open it slowly. Okay, press down lightly. Okay, let up. Down. Tighten up. Okay. And one more time. Open it up. Okay, press down lightly. And I don't see any more air bubbles, so go ahead and tighten it. And that should be good on bleeding it. Okay, now with that all bled, you want to come in here and just feel your feel your pedal, make sure it feels normal. And yeah, that feels normal to me. Uh, it did take a while on the bleeding because this was really loose. But now it's it's firmed up, so we should be good on that. And so with that all bled, let's go ahead and uh, clean up all this brake fluid. I'm just going to take some brake clean and spray all this down. Okay, so I got that all cleaned up with some brake clean. I uh, went ahead and put on a couple, uh, couple of this protective... Uh, plastic stuff around some of these wires because like I said some of that stuff was just falling off and uh, falling to pieces when I touched it it was so brittle and then just be sure to double check for any leaks and it looks like we're good yeah and we'll go ahead and uh, do our 
fuse box first. And we'll connect this wiring harness here. Take our seven millimeter, put that back on for the fuse box here. And we'll put a battery tray back in. Next, you can put your air filter housing back in. So you go ahead and put your air filter back in. And take your air filter housing top on. And don't forget this clip. It fell off earlier. So we'll put this back on. And then there's notches on that clip to get that lined up just right. Let's go ahead and slide that in. Put your four eight millimeter bolts back in. Okay, and on these clips, show you guys how these work. Just get everything lined up. And uh, somewhat tight. And then take a pair of pliers and squeeze on these tabs. And see how that just latches in there so then that's that's all you do to get that on there and then go ahead and plug in your mass airflow sensor and your master cylinder connector and then I don't know if I showed it earlier but I took this cover off even though I didn't need to I'll put this back on. Then let's go ahead and put the battery back in. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for my video today. I got my battery cover back on. And just an overview real quick. Again, we replaced the clutch master cylinder. Along with the clutch pedal spring. On my 2003 Ford Focus SVT. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, I got a lot more videos to come. And uh, until next time, thanks.